Hey everyone and welcome to Talk ETFs, ETF.com's weekly video series. My name is Sumit Roy and I'm Senior Analyst here at ETF.com. Today I'm speaking with Sean O'Hara, President of Pacer ETFs, an ETF issuer with over $25 billion in assets under management. Sean, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Sean, I want to start off by talking about one of your ETFs that's been incredibly successful, the Pacer US Cash Cows 100 ETF, ticker symbol COWZ, has seen inflows of more than $4 billion so far this year. And over the past three years, it's seen inflows of more than $14 billion. Why are investors so interested in this ETF? You know, it's kind of um, driven by sort of the change to uh, uh, traditional value-based investing. So for a long time, value essentially meant low price to book. And uh, in this market where the vast majority of the stock market's real value is in tangible assets, it's hard to measure tangible book value across a wide spectrum of stocks. You can certainly do it in utilities and you can do it with financials and real estate, but by, but by staying sort of wedded to that approach, you sort of limit your opportunities. And so we we use free cash flow yield as a way to screen, to pick out the 100 stocks, for example, from the Russell 1000 that have the highest free cash flow yield. Um, and that approach has been one that has um, not only done nicely relative to its benchmark, which would be traditional value, but it's provided you know, more competitive returns and, and in some cases kept up with the broad market. So without changing the underlying premise that you're buying cheap stocks. And so this, this new approach that we took eight years ago uh, seems to have delivered the returns that we would have expected because of the research that we did. And so I think that's probably the biggest contributor to the success of the, 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 the story. And what's interesting, so it is that it not only works in large cap, but it works the same way for small caps. It works the same way for international and global. So when you look at the statistics and you look at the results, um, using free cash flow and free cash flow yield as a way to screen for uh, a limited number of stocks out of a broad index actually produces the same sort of excess return patterns that we're seeing for large cap and COWZ. That's great. Yeah, certainly COWS is outperforming the S&P 500 handily since its inception. More recently, in 2022, it blew the S&P 500 out of the water. It was roughly flat. The S&P 500 dropped around 18%. This year, though, it's underperforming a bit. It's up 6%, I think, versus a 12% gain for the S&P 500. What's driving the variance versus the broader market? Is it the sector weights? Is it factor tilts? What is it? Yeah, there's a couple of things. So the S&P is not our benchmark. So let's be clear about that, right? Our benchmark is traditional value, which we're beating by four or 500 basis points year to day. So I think we're, we're, we're accomplishing our goal. Now, what's, what's driving the difference in return in the S&P and cows? It's essentially the four, first four months of the year when the magnificent seven stocks accounted for a huge percentage of the overall S&P's return. Um, and those are names that wouldn't have screened into the cow strategy. If you look at the last 90 days though, um, and I hate to do this because I don't want people benchmarking me to the S&P, right? But if you look at the last 90 days, cows actually has been outpacing the S&P 500. So, uh, and what's driving that really is a couple of things, I guess. One is, um, you know, we have been uh, underweight tech and overweight energy. Um, the energy story is one that, you know, we still have a supply demand problem. These energy names are tra trading at like unbelievably low valuations. They generate huge amounts of free cash flow and excess free cash flow. Um, they're starting to raise their dividends pretty aggressively and buy back stock. And, and looking towards the end of this year, um, you know, there's more calls for, I think, for people that, that see the oil going to 150 than there are thinking it's going to go back down to 50. So it's sold off here a little bit the last couple of days, but we still have this massive supply demand imbalance. We're not producing enough oil to keep up with the increasing demand. We, we drain the strategic petroleum reserves and the, the tanks at, at Cushing are not bone dry, but they're at their lowest levels in a long time. So, um, you know, that hopefully, you know, being positioned in, in, in that sector uh, and being overweight, that sector will continue to be an, an advantage going forward between now and the, and the end of the year. 
And then the other thing about free cash flow and free cash flow yield is that it's not no not only the sector allocations that make the story work and the performance come through. It's actually the individual stock selection that it attributes more of the total return that we get. So you can be in energy, but it's the individual stock selections oftentimes in the sector where we're overweight or underweight that really drive the excess returns. Mm -hmm.